First of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizing committee for the uh, kind uh, invitation. And the topic of my presentation today is syndromic testing. And I will talk this from uh, AMS perspective. Here is my disclosure. Uh, as you know, the uh, LTI, low risk bed track infection, I mean the pneumonia remains to be the leading killer for children. Um, actually, uh, a lot of uh, microorganisms can cause uh, pneumonia in children. Uh, you can see from this figure, uh, the distribution of these microorganisms actually are uh, different from one age group to the other. And more importantly, uh, you can see from here, more than 50 to 60% of the uh, uh, pneumonia in children less than 18 years of age are caused by uh, polymicrobials. So you can see from here, uh, the polymicrobial infection can be bacterial viral co-infection and also can be multiple viral infection. And polymicrobial pneumonia actually is more common in children less than five years of age. So to make a precision diagnosis for the cause of pneumonia in children actually is quite challenging. If you choose to use traditional testing method, you have to order the test one by one for each organism. And the whole procedure will be very uh, labor intensive and also a time consuming. Um, so a syndromic approach with the uh, molecular testing would be a better choice nowadays for the rapid diagnosis of uh, uh, the cause for pneumonia in children. So um, you, the a molecular testing uh, for a panel of pathogens at a time is, la is, is more efficient and also uh, can save uh, a lot of time to reach to the final diagnosis for the cause of pneumonia in children. And today I will uh, specifically address uh, a molecular testing method called FIMARAY that has been widely used in the clinical setting for the syndromic uh, molecular testing for children with uh, pneumonia. And actually, uh, the uh, uh, film array uh, uh, panels yeah, covered uh, uh, different kinds of uh, clinical syndromes. And today, I will specifically, specifically talk about the uh, film array uh, respiratory panel, the so-called RP panel. And the RP panel actually target 20 targets uh, of respiratory pathogens at a time. And also, they recently also developed uh, the so-called pneumonia panel, PP panel. This panel uh, targets 33 targets at a time. And the uh, pile film, the film array uh, panel actually is an innovative isothermal multiplex PCR technology. So it can um, target multiple organisms uh, for the uh, a specific syndrome at a time. And to begin with, I will show you uh, uh, the result of a clin clinical study that we uh, uh, undertaken, undertake, uh, taken in Taiwan for, to evaluate the impact of uh, syndromic rapid molecular detection of res respiratory pathogens uh, on antibiotic use in hospitalized children with LRTI during the COVID-19 pandemic. And here's the background of uh, the, the study I just mentioned to you. And you know, uh, multiple organisms can cause pneumonia in children. And also the symptoms and signs of the pneumonia uh, caused by bacteria or viral actually are quite similar, making clinical diagnosis very uh, challenging. So respiratory infection oftentimes leads to excessive antibiotic use in the clinical setting. 
and now uh, we can apply the rapid molecular detection method for uh, rapid diagnosis, and hopefully this may lead to uh, redu uh, reduction of uh, antibiotic use. And this actually cannot be achieved with uh, the traditional methods. So the aim of the study I just mentioned to you is to evaluate the impact of uh, syndromic molecular testing on antimicrobial use for children with uh, ARTI. We will measure the uh, uh, antibiotic days of therapy and also length of therapy of, of the patient, of the children with pneumonia. And also we will describe the pattern of and distribution of the pathogens for these children with RTI during the pandemic. So this is the uh, uh, study design for this uh, study. This is a case control study. Here is the inclusion criteria. And in terms of the exclu exclusion criteria, we, don't, we didn't enroll neonatal patients and also patients with hospital-acquired pneumonia. We only target on uh, CAP. So uh, the case group actually are patients uh, with uh, RTI and also receive the theme array panel. And the case con the control group are uh, age match children with RTI without theme array testing. And we collected uh, clinical as well as laboratory data from this patient. So here's the result. We eventually we enrolled 283 cases um, in thin array group. And also we have matched 150 controls who didn't receive any thin array during the study period. So this study was conducted from uh, January 2020 to June 2021. So actually this study was done during the pandemic. Here is the figure showing you the distribution of the respiratory pathogens uh, detected by FEMA array. You can see from this figure, the uh, uh, RTI actually occurred more commonly from winter to spring. And in this study, we didn't detect any, any influenza A or influenza B infection in children. Um, this is uh, the pie chart showing you uh, the respiratory pathogens that cause the pneumonia in, in these patients uh, using film array. You can see from here, the most common viral pathogen is uh, human uh, rhinovirus, followed by, um, followed by RSV and human metanumovirus, adenovirus, and also parainfluenza virus. And these viruses are uh, most common pathogens that cause uh, LRTI in children. Now we, I, I'm showing you the uh, result for the comparison. First, we compare the uh, the uh, uh, background information of the patient in FEMA array group and also in uh, the control group. As you can see from here, um, we have seen uh, some patients uh, required who required uh, ICU admission, and all the ICU admission actually occurred in, in patients in the FIM array group. And also of the FIM array group uh, received less oxygen supplementation, but they required longer hospital stay. If we compare the, uh, uh, the same parameter in film array negative group and also in film, uh, and film array positive group, you can see clearly uh, patients in film array positive group require more oxygen supplementation, um, su suggesting that uh, more severe patients actually um, included in the film array positive group. And talking about the uh, uh, diagnosis, clinical diagnosis of the patient uh, between female array group and control group. And uh, there is no uh, difference between the two groups. And with regard to the uh, diagnose, clinical diagnosis 
uh, of this patient in thin array positive and, and thin array negative groups, you can see from this table uh, more uh, bronchopneumonia actually were observed in thin array positive group. And there's no difference in terms of the uh, laboratory findings between thin array groups and also the control groups. And also no difference in the laboratory findings between thin array negative and thin array positive groups. Now we uh, are going to look at the inference of the molecular testing on antibiotic use. First, we compare the control group and the thin array group. You can see from here that um, antibiotic days of therapy was longer in the thin array group. But when ICU admission in the thin array group were in, excluded from the analysis, uh, the difference actually disappeared. So the result indicated that patients admitted in the uh, ICU in the thin array group actually received more antibiotics. Okay, when we compare the, again, compare the uh, antibiotic use between thin array negative group and thin array positive group. Actually, there was no difference between the two groups. And then we did a subgroup analysis on patients with LRTI. This means patients with pneumonia. We compare pneumonia patients between thin array negative group and also uh, thin array positive group. And clearly you can see that the Days of therapy, days of antibiotic therapy was significantly shorter in patients without LRTI and tested positive in femur ray. So the, there are two major conclusions from this uh, 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 study from our hospital. So the days of therapy, antibiotic therapy was shorter in patients with pneumonia treated in general wards and with an identifiable pathogen by the uh, syndromic molecular testing method, indicating a very important role of, of such molecular syndromic testing in precision antibiotic use for inpatients with pneumonia. And also from our results, we can conclude that excessive antibiotic use can potentially be avoided by apply, applying a syndromic molecular detection method for children with LRTI. So uh, as you know that uh, from the uh, AMS perspective, the cornerstone for AMS is to make a correct diagnosis. And from this perspective, clinical microbiology testing is key to the success of AMS. And regarding the state-of-the-art instrument in clinical microbiology, there, there has been three in very important uh, innovations in the past decade. Uh, the, the one, one is the automatic uh, identification and antimicrobial susceptibility, test, susceptibility testing, and also blood culture system. The second one is the applying application of multi top mass uh, in the rapid identification of the pathogen. And the third one is, is the uh, syndromic based uh, molecular testing. This is the focus of uh, my presentation today. And actually uh, way back to 2016 in the uh, IDSA antimicrobial stewardship guidelines, it's clearly stated that rapid viral testing shows the potential to reduce inappropriate antibody use. Although at that time, the results may not be so consistent, but nowadays more and more evidence show that um, syndromic molecular testing is the key to the success of uh, uh, antimicrobial stewardship. In, in this uh, IDSA guideline, it's also clearly stated that uh, in the adult patients in ICU, serial measurement, the procalcitonin 
can help to uh, the, the escalation of empirical antimicrobial therapy, thereby reducing the uh, excessive antibiotic use for the uh, critical patients. And today I have shown you, we uh, used the femur uh, respiratory panel for the uh, correct diagnosis of uh, um, children with LRTI, thereby reducing uh, uh, unnecessary uh, empirical antibiotic use in the in some uh, uh, more severe patients in the fin array group, and actually the uh, such fin array panel has in, extended to a new panel called fin array pneumonia panel. In this in this new version of the panel, actually um, the panel actually can target more than 33 uh, targets at a time, not only uh, including the uh, uh, bacteria and also viral atypical pathogen, but also including uh, some antimicrobial resistant genes. I think the result even can even be more informative in helping in guiding clinicians for uh, uh, antimicrobial choice for their patients. And so, um, syndromic molecular testing is is now confirmed um, uh, helpful for uh, for the antimicrobial stewardship. The result, uh, actually, I show you today in pediatric patients, actually is confirmed generalizable to adult patients. Uh, I'm showing you some uh, information uh, described in a recent review in JAC, and they. Uh, from this table, you see there are two studies uh, that apply uh, using the uh, film array uh, pneumonia panel in, in the evaluation of adult patients with pneumonia. The first study was put, carried out in uh, US and they applied film array RP panel pneumonia panel, PP panel, in adult patients with pneumonia. What they found is that such uh, multiple uh, organism detection method can allow for earlier antibiotic adjustment in more than 70% of the patients with pneumonia, thereby resulting in an average of 6.2 antibiotic days saved uh, per each person. And the second study by also applied the femur ray uh, PP panel. And that study was carried out in Taiwan, also in adult uh, patients with uh, pneumonia. And what they found is that such multipress uh, uh, panel have led to the excretion of empirical antibody therapy in 27% of the patient. But on the other hand, uh, led to escalation of therapy for patients' new pneumonia in, in about 14% uh, of the uh, patients. So talking about AMS, we are not just talking about uh, the escalation of the therapy. For critical patients with pneumonia, with the help of this uh, syndromic molecular testing, we sometimes we have to in, uh, encourage um, Excretion of the syrup for the treatment of these uh, patients. And this is another study uh, that is from, this is a single center prospective randomized control study comparing uh, the thin array PP panel to a conventional in house PCR panel for adult patients with pneumonia. As you can see from here, the uh, thin array. Uh, RP panel actually performed uh, better to, to the control in-house panel in terms of the uh, uh, shortening the duration of antibiotic biotic use and in uh, uh, the escalation therapy and also in reducing the length of hospital stay for the patients with pneumonia. And there are still some limitation when we talk about the uh, syndromic molecular testing for uh, patients with uh, a pneumonia. First of all, first of all, we must interpret 
the uh, molecular testing result carefully with, along with the cultural results when making definitive antimicrobial therapy for our patients. And also it's very important to consider, uh, sometimes you will see the inconsistency with resistant gene detection. And of course, this would require more studies on using the new panel. And also uh, the uh, molecular detection method also required uh, further diagnostic uh, stewardship and proper interpretation of the result in the context of clinical findings. Other limitations include, we still do not know the clinical significance of the detection of multiple targets uh, results uh, from the clinical specimens. And also sometimes uh, the positive result may not distinguish between colonization and active infection. So always we have to take an into the consideration of the clinical findings when we interpret the result from the syndromic molecular testing. And also the, uh, the molecular testing may miss the core infection uh, with bacteria and fungi. And very importantly, the uh, uh, nasopharyngeal, if we use the uh, uh, RP panel, the nasopharyngeal panel uh, sample may miss low respiratory tract pathogen in critical patient. And this is especially true for severe influenza. And we have previously, we have known that uh, uh, the uh, rapid test of influenza virus from the nasal pharynx may not reflect the real, inf the real the, uh, negative result uh, in the uh, uh, low airway in patients with uh, influenza. And also the, uh, the uh, uh, molecular testing panel uh, probably less sensitive for the detection of certain pathogens, such as uh, some strains of influenza A and B. And this is the last uh, slide of my presentation. Uh, the 2019 IDS clinical pre uh, practice guideline and clearly stated that uh, cl clinicians should use the uh, syndromic-based multiplex RT-PCR panel targeting uh, multiple uh, respiratory pa uh, pathogens for hospitalized immunocompromised patients with pneumonia, and also for hospitalized patients uh, with severe symptoms. And with this uh, uh, syndromic-based molecular testing, um, you know, the uh, unnecessary uh, more testing and also excessive antibodies can potentially be avoided. And here, uh, here, uh, with here, I end my presentation. Thank you for your attention.